Welcome. Scott here. This is part 2 of the beginner guide video. In this video I will be covering the fundamental aspects that make your character stronger. Before I go down the details, let's go through the character status screen. I am using my alternate account Machina as a sample. You will see number references on them. There are 8 of them. So, let's get started. For 1 and 2, they are known also know as training boards. There are two of them, enhancement boards and summon boards. Enhancement boards is represented by the blue hexagon icon. They provide boost to your character's skills. For some of the advanced boards, you need to have weapon passives and crystal passives to access. Summon boards is represented by the orange hexagon icon. They provide additional stats and combat passives that will aid your character in battles. You can get the passive by getting summon board points at the World of Illusions, Ultimate. Number 3 is represented by a blue orb with a numeric number representing the current level. The Force Enhancement Boards grants passives that interact with your party's force gauge. To enhance the levels, you need to use enhancement points together with force shards or force stones. Number 4 is your weapon. A character can equip one weapon at the time. But hitting the auto button, the game will automatically equip the weapon with the highest stats but it doesn't equip the weapon passive unless you have master limit break the weapon. If you are unfamiliar with the term that I used, please refer to part 1 which I provided in the video description below. A character can have 6 weapons, Burst, FR, LD, EX, 35 CP, and 15 CP. There are few characters who has the additional weapons like World of Illusion or Dark Weapons. Master Limit Break the Weapons also allows you change the weapon skin that your character is using. Each weapon will have their own unique command. Thus, it is your interest to limit break the lower tier weapons as you can enjoy the bonuses of the weapon passives. Weapon passives provide enhancements to the skills, buffs, and stats boosts. Number 5 is your character armor. There are three sets of armor, 35 CP, 90 CP, and HG armor. They can be upgraded. The armor providing your character with more CP which allows your character to equip more passives and stats boost. HG or Lufania armor allows your character to break their brave damage cap limits and some useful utility as well. Number 6 isn't visible directly on the screen. You need to click on the equip button. Upon doing that, you will gain access to the commands that your character have equipped. There you can find the bloom passive which grants your character access to their additional ability. For number 7, you will access the passive abilities, which can be further breakdown into the following major categories, crystal passives, board passives, Force Enhancement Passives, Equipment, and Artifacts Passives. For Weapon Passives, you will find them there once you have Master Limit Break the Weapon. For Number 8, you find 3 Orb Slots. You can unlock the third slot upon Master Limit Break the 90 CP Armor. Spheres provides additional passives. Most spheres have trigger conditions like upon break, upon HP restored etc. Lastly for Number 9, you will find the enhance button where you can access the enhancement menu that allows you to see all the passives that you have acquired for the character. In summary, for a character to be fully functional the way that he or she is intended to, you need to make sure that you have acquired all the required passives. Now let's proceed to the passive abilities menu. Now, let's discuss on the core power of the character, the passive abilities. 1. Under level and crystal strength passives, you will find all passives that your character gain from gaining crystal levels. Currently, the max crystal level now is level 90. You gain access to more crystal passives as you gain crystal levels. Level 55 and level 60 will unlock the extended abilities of the character's skill 1 and skill 2. Level 70 will unlock the character's A. Level 75 will unlock the character's base call. Level 80 will unlock the character's LD call ability or LDCA. Do note that you will need to MLB the character LD weapon to access this. Level 85 will unlock the extended abilities of the character's EX plus extension. 
To use this, you need acquire the EX plus weapon passive of the character. Level 88 will unlock the extended abilities of the character A. Level 90 will allow the character to equip Ultima weapon. The crystal passives also grant stats boost, more skill uses, additional combat passives and increase your character's total CP which is the points you need to equip them. Depending on the battle situation, there are some passives you might not want to equip for better effect. 2. Under the board passives, you will find all the summon board and enhancement board passives. Once you have mastered all the passives, remember to equip them. They are not auto-equipped on mastery. 3. Under force enhancement passives, you will find all force enhancement passives. These passives provides faster force gauge charging, additional HP damage bonus when using skills, more stats boost during your party force time, etc. 4. Under equipment passives, you will find all the weapon passives that you have acquired. Do note that most weapon passives are costly except for LD or FR passive. To ensure that your character are operating their optimal efficiency, they need all their weapon passives. So, if you intend to invest rare enhancement materials on the character, make sure you have all weapons. Getting the best weapon but no other weapon passives is actually making your character weaker. You won't able to clear end game content without them. You can also find the bloom passives which enhances your character's AA and increase the AA skill uses. And lastly. 5. Under the artifact passives, you will find 3 passives you can equip for the character. You can gain artifact passives by ML Bing artifacts. A character can hold up to 7 passives. Passives generally provide stats boosts. There are the infamous 6 characters, Sarah, Vivi, Aerith, Lion, Cater and Yuna. Their artifact passives grants them additional skill uses. Do take note that grinding for perfect artifacts is very time consuming without the MOG pass. Now I have gone through the passives and basic features of the character status screen. Let's proceed to the command screen. As you acquired more crystal and weapon passives, the character will gain access to advanced version of their skills. A fully built character can have up to 3 pages of commands. All characters will come with basic attack and brave command. For certain character, this brave and HP command will change to special command depends on the character active buff or passives equipment. For example, Lunafreya's HP command will change to heavy prayer and brave command will change to quick prayer if her oracle stacks is at level 4. S1 or skill 1 depends on the following for power up, crystal level 55 and MLB 15 CP. S2 or skill 2 depends on the following for power up, crystal level 60 and MLB 35 CP. A or additional ability will be unlocked when the character gets C70 and upgraded with C88. You will gain additional use if you have MLB the bloom passive and equip on the character. EX command allows your character to use a rechargeable skill that has a charging gauge on the combat UI. The speed of the recast gauge varies from character to character. You can increase the recast charging rate by removing the character's speed passives. A speed passive is any passive that has the word speed or light on the passive name. You can get advanced version or the EX ability while gaining the EX plus passives which involves using enhancement books. The EX plus passive can further powered up with you have attained the character C85 passive. These skills are usually third or fourth hardest hitting skill after the LD, FR, or burst ability. LD or limited weapon command allows your character to gain a long lasting buff that further enhance your character's combat powers. This is the most important passive of any character. You can forget about building a character if you miss this weapon passive. FR command allows your character to access the force time when your force gauge is full. While force time is active, your character will gain additional damage bonus if you using abilities or commands that meets the character's force time conditions. If the character has FR boards, you can use the ability as a FR echo, which is an FR ability that can be used during force time without taking a force turn. Please do note that using an FR echo will consume a force ability use. 
Please also do note that not all FR characters have their FR boards unlocked. Eventually, every character will get their FR boards. Burst command comes into two types, burst phase and burst finisher. You will unlock the burst finisher when you have master limit break the burst weapon. These materials are extremely rare. So do take note of that. The burst command allows the character to use their burst phase where they can take 5 to 6 actions before finishing with their burst attack. Do note that you can activate only one burst phase per battle. For burst finisher, you can activate 3 burst finisher in one battle. Burst finisher usually come with powerful auras, use them timely to get in combat advantage for your fight. When you setting your friend support, make sure you have your weapon passives equipped or most people won't follow you back. If others don't follow you back, you can only get 3 turn friend support. If others follow back, you will get 5 turn friend support. You can tell whether you have weapon passives equipped by the color and the font of the command buttons. Using a character with the weapon passives and without weapon passives is like day and night. I have gone through the basics of the character passives, commands, and a brief explanation on how they work. Let us proceed on the next steps on how to get your character stronger. Let us start off with the basic core strength, the crystal passives. With recent QOL update, all new characters recruited will start off at crystal level 70. So, you need to grind crystals to level the character up to the next level crystals. Bulk of the crystals materials needed to upgrade it your character can be farmed at the cycle quest. If you find a flowering cactur, you will get bonus drops. When you access a crystal stage, you will see number of crystals that you have held at the moment. Clicking on the green eye icon, you access the crystal status screen where you can see the crystals you need to get in order to level a character to the required crystal level. For the last tier crystal, you can get them from co-op events. With the start of the current event, Tornado Tornado, you can farm the last tier crystal without limit constraints. In other words, you can get any character to level 90 by grinding the co-op and use the tokens to exchange for the crystal. Crystal's passives are important as they allows you to access the stronger version of the your character abilities, which I will elaborate on them later. When you clear dimensions and entropy tier 5, you will access to Ultima mission menu where you can farm Ultima cores. Getting a character to crystal level 90 will give you 10 Ultima cores. You need 800 cores to get an Ultima weapon to max level for first cast of the weapon type. Currently in global, there are a total of 165 recruitable characters. In other words, you can easily get at least two maxed Ultima weapons by just grinding crystal levels. Ultima weapons are powerful relics that raises the character HP damage limit and grants HP damage bonus. A maxed Ultima weapon give the equipped character up to 40% HP damage bonus and raises the HP damage limit cap by 40%. For more information on Ultima weapons, you can refer to the Tonberry Troop website for more information. I have included the link in the video description below. Now let's cover the summon board passives. If you have just started the game, you will have a healthy stash of summon board wild points that allows you to max at least 10 characters. To max a board for a character, you need to get at least 6500 points. You need do your farming at the chaos stages or level 100 where you find the summon on the pedestal. It will cost you 50 SP per run. Doing a run on the summon board will also give you points to the character and some points added to the wild points pool. Points for the wild points pool can be reallocated and top up the shortfall to the character who need the points. You can boost the points when the character is synergy for current time limited events or equip final fantasy status badges. We have just gotten FF6 badge so equipping that will give all FF6 characters double EXP boost. You can also enhance points earned by using EXP books. From time to time, there are special announcement where synergy bonus will be effective. The character that carries synergy bonus will be emitting a purple glow. With the power of FR or LD, you can easily one shot the summon within a turn so farming for the points won't be too time consuming. 
In the world of illusions ultimate, you can obtain materials to further enhance your summons and summon points to strengthen your characters. Use the summon points earned on the summon board screen. When special synergy event boost is active, the synergy characters will be emitting a pink glowing aura. You will earn more summon points by using them when you doing the grinding. Characters that are synergy in current events will have double EXP boost active. Using them will get more summon points. In other words, do focus summon board grinding for characters who are synergy first. You can get more points by using EXP support items, book of training for double points boost or tome of training for triple points boost. There is a total of 10 ultimate summon boards. Each of them has their own boards to grind and different type of summon board passives. On the screen you can find a summary of the general passive selection. To know which summon passive to select for a character, I highly recommend you to visit the Tonberry Troop website. Sometimes the general rule does not apply to certain characters. Such examples are X-Death, Purim and Selfie. If you are interested in understanding the rationale why the passives are recommended, you can visit the Summon Hub for more details. I have included the link to the Summon Hub page in the video description. So, you will probably ask what is the benefit of doing all these grinding? Like other passives, Summon Boards offer permanent stats boost. Some of the Summon Passives grants additional benefits like Elemental Weakness Boost, Brave Damage, Brave Heal, Evasion, etc. Having a fully boarded character will raise the character stats by almost 1.5 times their base stats. If you are a returning player, do check the boards again. You might probably didn't max them out. In earlier days of the game, people only grind the boards for treasure nodes and only grind max boards for characters they used in the previous era. Upon mastering a summon board for a character, you will get 300 gems, 3 tickets, and 5 armor tokens. If you master 10 boards for a character, you will get 3000 gems, 30 tickets, and 50 armor tokens. So grinding the summon boards also give you additional resources to pull for more weapons and upgrading your character's armor. If you are unsure which summon passive to select for a character, do visit the Tonberry Troop website and the character for the detailed list of passive that you should get for the characters. They also provide the rationale why the character deviates from selecting the common usual summon passives. Before I end this section, let me showcase a short video demo how I do summon board grinding and limit breaking the summon boards.
Now let's proceed with the other board, the enhancement boards. To upgrade your character's combat abilities, you need to invest enhancement points to upgrade your character's core skills. The enhancement board tree consists of five branches. The branch leading to the top is the enhancement board for your character's S1. The branch leading to the southeast is the enhancement board for your character's S2. The branch leading south is the enhancement board for your character's LD and access to the character's LDCA. The branch leading southeast is the enhancement boards for your character's EX and EX Plus extension. The branch leading northeast is the enhancement boards for your character's FR Echo and FR boards. Do note that only a few selected characters have accessibility to these boards now. To level up the boards, you need to spend enhancement points. It will cost you 8000 points to max out the characters S1, S2, EX and LD boards. 13000 points is needed for character who has gained access to the FR boards. To level the boards, there are gate locks which requires you to have the unit's weapon and crystal passive. To fully master the character enhancement boards for S1, you need to unlock the character's crystal level 55 and 15 CP weapon passive. You can only obtain the weapon passive upon MLB the weapon. To fully master the character enhancement boards for S2, you need to unlock the character's crystal level 20, 60 and 35 CP weapon passive. You can only obtain the weapon passive upon MLB the weapon. To fully master the character enhancement boards for EX, you need to unlock the EX and EX Plus passives. EX Plus passive is obtained by realizing an MLB your EX weapon. This skill is usually the third hardest hitting skill for the character. For the LD boards which is the branch leading southwards, you need to attain the LD weapon passive and getting the character to crystal level 75. Doing this will also unlock the character's LDCA which can be used for other characters. For the FR boards, which is the branch leading northeast, you will unlock it upon getting the FR weapon. You will get access the FR extension upon MLB the FR weapon. To MLB a FR weapon, you need to invest 12 high power stones or 240 power stones. The FR echo allows your character to use the FR during the force time. Do note that these boards is only available for character who have their FR boards unlocked. With the introduction of the current endgame difficulty Shinryu, we also getting the force enhancement boards. The force enhancement boards contain passive that interact with the force gauge. It is noted that the force boards also include passives that boost your force gauge charging rate. In global, the max level that you can reach is FE30. To access force level 11 and beyond, on top of enhancement points, you need to invest force shards to level up the character's force enhancement. Upon MLB a character's FR, you will gain two force stones. You can get force shards from limited time co-op, clearing Shinryu or special event Chocobo panels. On the screen you can see a table that summarizes the key upgrades that you will get at each force levels. The key levels that you need to watch out for is FE3, FE13 and FE23 where your character will gain access to passives that boost your party force gauge fill rate. In general, the higher force level your character has, the faster you will gain access to your force gauge. There is a niche role of characters called force chargers. All these characters have a common feature, they possess one or two instant turn non-attacking abilities. When using these skills, they grant tremendous boost to filling up the force gauge or supercharge your force HP damage bonus by 50% if you have their force level maxed. Regardless whether you are starting now or a veteran player, Force Charger offer very valuable investments for your enhancement points. Currently, in GL only Sheer Lotta has FR Echo and Force Charging utility. Do expect a few more great supports making their return or debut in upcoming timeline with Force Charging utility. Let me illustrate an example on how the Force Gauge Charger impact the Force Gauge. Let me use our recent GL first FRBT unit Pernello as an example. Please refer to the two tables on the right. 
The first table reflects how each individual force levels speed up the filling of your party force gauge. Other than the standard FE3, FE13 and FE23 force gauge filling bonus, Pernello has additional force gauge bonus in her base skills under level 5 and 10. Force charger are valuable as they supercharge your force gauge by spamming their force charging abilities with their basic skills S1 or S2. You can get a base 50% HP damage bonus per turn on top of the force time conditions. For example, if you meet all Pernello's FR condition and have her use S1, you can get 115% HP damage bonus per turn. Although spamming skills feels boring, they are useful when you are in a pinch. There will be future fights, we are bound to face fights that the enemy have boosts to their force gauge based on their actions or your party actions. So you see them using their force ability before you can use yours if your force level is low or you don't outpace them with fast filling. In the video description, I have a link to a video which I have cover on force gauge mechanics. You can refer to that video if you want to understand more. Before I proceed to the next section, let me illustrate three video clips showcasing force gauge filling and supercharging. I have covered the three major passive boards that determine your character's strengths. Two of the enhancement boards will require you to invest enhancement points to gain access the enhanced abilities and upgrade your character's combat ability. So how do we get them? Each new piece of content, character event, new lost chapter, campaigns, raids, summon events, story chapters, will let you earn a maximum of 5000 board points which can be used on any character's board. You can increase the enhancement points you get per event by purchasing MOG Pass, paid subscription. Having a normal MOG Pass, will raises the points earned to 15000 points per event. 
having a premium MOG pass will raise the points earned to 30,000 points per event. Do note that old lost chapters, intersecting wills, or story chapters or any permanent content do not apply. Content will show a blue star icon indicating your progress toward the maximum character board point total for that content. You can rear on easier stages in order to reach the maximum point total, if you struggle with the most difficult stages. As the game progresses, you can get also get more points by farming them in time limited co-op or completing special chocobo panels. So how many points do we need to invest to master all boards? To max a character, you need to invest 8000 points for the character basic enhancement boards, S1, S2, EX and LD. 5000 points for the character's FR boards. To max the character's force enhancement, you need to invest 15,000 points and 3 force stones. In summary, you need a whopping total of 28,000 points to fully max out a character with FR boards. We are only getting 5,000 points and probably 15k from time limited co-op. So, we are constantly draining our enhancement points. If you are playing as a free-to-play player, you need to plan on how spend your enhancement points wisely. You need to prioritize to invest which character and how much points to invest. The enhancement points crunch will be alleviated when we proceed down further in the future timeline where we could have daily missions or chocobo panels that allows us to grind enhancement points on a daily basis if global follows JP. Until the day has come, you need to budget the use of your enhancement points wisely. On the second table that is shown on the screen, I have list down some budget options investments. You can choose to spend limited enhancement points for an option utility to ease your co-op grinding or sometimes it is also possible to clear end game content which I often do with my alternate account. For units that you don't intend to use in the party often but you want their LDCA, you can choose to spend points for LD call option. It costs 1030 points for LD call without extension and 1340 points for LD call with extension. I usually go for the latter. For units that you luck sack their FR but you don't have HPS to max them, you can go for a cheap 800 points to use the echo attack or 1760 points if you want the extension, which is only accessible if you have MLB the FR weapon. Next, allow me show some examples how to do budget investments. In order to do this, you just need to go for the key paths and ignore other paths on the enhancement nodes. You need to do this manually and avoid using the auto button. You can gain access to next path after unlocking the adjacent nodes. The screens shows on how the trees look like for 1. LD call option 2. FR echo option 3. FR echo with FR boards do note that by not maxing out the full board will limit damage potencies a bit but the option will still work as intended. I will only recommend you to do this unless you have limited enhancement points pool available. For LD call with extension, you need to get the following criteria met first before you invest the points. 1. You need to have a copy of the MLB LD weapon. And 2. The character crystal level needs to be at least at C90. To do this, you just need to manually unlock the nodes and go southwards until you reach the orange node. The branch pathway leading southeast is where you find the LD extension at the end of the branch. When building budget LDCA options, do note that some LDCA needs the character to have EX plus passives attained to be effective. Most characters need their EX plus passives at least 2 out 3 to get their starting buffs. Examples of such characters are Hope and Kate Sith. For FR Echo option, you will only build this if you want to ease your co-op farming and gotten a copy of the unit's FR. If you get the FR to 1 out 3 limit break, you will get 2 uses of FR Echo but the force time is limited to 5 turns only. You just need unlock the adjacent nodes until you reach the Echo node which have the word Echo on the name of the passive. For the example on the screen for Cloud of Darkness, it is called Void Form Particle Beam Echo. If you have managed to get 4 copies but you don't fully build the FR unit, you can go all the way until the FR boards. 
MLB the FR will also give two force stones which you can use it to level up other units FE boards. If you want to know more about the force enhancement boards, the Tonberry Troop website have a detailed section covering on how to do budget investments. I have included the link to the page in the video description below. With this, I have covered all all the basics and factors that affect your character's strength. This marks the end of part 2 of the beginner guides. Hopefully you find it useful. If you like the video, please give a like. Please subscribe to my channel for future gaming content. See you in the next video bye.